One of the biggest yearly events in the Hunter Classic is going on right now, and that is of course the Summer Fiesta. This year's is a little bit different than in the past, and basically, there are two main missions with more objectives than I have time to name in the intro here, but the rewards are really really worth it. For one mission, you have an unlimited ammo subscription, which I'm guessing is going to be the 3 day, but I don't know, it might be longer, 4000 GM and 250 EM. I don't know that they've ever done EM as a mission reward, so that's a pretty big deal. The other mission, which has more objectives, has a happy camper tent, two separate bundles of camping supplies, I don't know if they'll be the same size or different sizes, 8000 GM and another 100 EM. All these objectives, running for about a month, I think are going to be well worth the time, and we're out here on Logger's Point to hopefully start to chip away at some of those. Now because of all the mission objectives that I mentioned, this hunt is going to be a lot different than what we normally do. I do have a boat with me, but it's really only for maybe unique circumstances. We're mostly going to be going with the 308 and a bit potentially of the 223 today. So the main kind of bulk of the objectives in the second mission is a bunch of feral hogs with different fur types. You need a red common, a black common, a black white belted, and a whole bunch more. Now I don't have my hog feeder filled today. We do have hog feed with us though, and we're going to go and drop that in the feeder. Now, in any other week this would have worked out just fine. This video would have been before the Wednesday night classic stream and we could have just kind of continued on from there. Because we had other things going on for video content this week, the video is actually coming out after the stream. So, assuming everything kind of went to plan on stream last night, we should be checking out a feeder on stream that we're going to fill in today's video and if we can get any bonus hogs and get those fur types out of the way, that just kind of gets us less to do maybe when we get to a feeder and see potential, you know, multiple hogs that we want to take. But I think this is the black common. There's actually two different colors for the females. I want to say this is what we want. It's all just going to say common, so it's just going to depend on what the mission tells us. And that says a black white belted, which it was not. <laughs> now, I have seen on multiple occasions screenshots in the community of like the wrong objective being checked off. So I mean I guess at least we did something but maybe that other fur type for the females will work or maybe it has to be a male, I don't know. But it was worth taking the shot, I'm just not exactly sure what that means for if we actually see a black white belted feral hog. We might be in luck here. That is a gray fur type bobcat, and actually a big one. For the fur type objective, we do need a gray bobcat, but I'm at best unsure about this fur type thing, so hopefully this actually works. That is enough to bring that down. Honestly, if that completes it, we might switch up our loadout and maybe carry something else that might help us more. Bobcat's the only reason we have the 223 right now. So, if that does it, we don't really have a great reason to continue carrying it. If we were going to get the hog feeder filled, I'd grab something like the 4570 or maybe the 340. I don't think we're going to run into enough hogs that we're going to want to kill that many, so... I don't know, we might switch it up, but we also might actually have a pretty nice bobcat here for our mission animal for that. Again, assuming this actually works with the fur type. The hog there did not give me a lot of confidence in that, but it definitely appears to be the gray. According to this, it is the gray. 8.8 .8 though. The weight and score estimate were encouraging. Not really all that special in the end. 119 CSS is nice, but that actually did complete the objective, so probably we'll go back to the tent, maybe grab another weapon, and then carry on. Now it's Hard to say if this is actually going to register as it should, but that looks to be a white black spotted feral hog, which is one of the objectives we need to complete, and I'm thinking it might be the one that we spooked. I had fleeing tracks coming over here, and it's just not coming into a call, so 4570 maybe was worth grabbing because I don't know that the 308 was going to do very well taking a shot like that, but fingers crossed that's going to bring him down. And before we run off and go to track him, we'll go ahead and fill this feeder. And honestly, I mean, we're just here to fill it. I was actually going to maybe see if we could call in any whitetail. 
The other mission, which we haven't gotten to talk about at all yet, is what I might call trophy objectives. You need a 170 plus whitetail, a 200 plus mule deer, and some others. I was kind of hoping to maybe stumble into something like that out here on loggers as well. But so far, it's been all feral hogs and the bobcat, but I think the 4570 is going to be enough to bring that down, and again, as long as it actually completes the objective that it would appear to, that should be another one off the list. And by the way, just to show it, this is the initial blood. You can see the track is roaming. The hog is down 20 meters away, or maybe a tiny bit more, so that worked out just fine. 4570, definitely worthwhile to go and grab that. As for the objective though, and I don't think I've actually shot one with this fur type yet, now that's called piebald. So does that mean it's not going to be the black white spotted? I don't know what else would be, or white black spotted I guess is what the objective said. No it is. So now I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit. There's also an objective for a blonde black spotted, which I'm betting is the old piebald. That's been made more common, and I saw that earlier in the hunt, just back here on the way to the tower. I looked at the objectives, didn't see one for piebald, and decided to pass it, but pretty sure we actually need it, so now we're gonna go and find a track. That is not the hog I'm talking about, but I mean, I guess we'll try to get that too. I'm assuming that's maybe the red black spotted, or kinda hard to say, but we'll take it and see what objective it might complete. That'll do just fine to take that down. The only unfortunate thing is we did get on the trail of the piebald or blonde black spotted, whatever it's called. And I'm kind of thinking it's not that far away, so we probably just spooked it again. But if this is going to check off another objective, I didn't really plan on making this a feral hog only hunt, but it is something I'd like to get done. So this also is defined as a piebald. 333 scoring female, and that counts as the blonde black spotted, which is what I thought we were tracking. I am getting more and more confused as we go. At this point, we gotta go and see what this one counts as too. Maybe because it's the original piebald, it's not among these, but I mean, it could be any number of them, honestly. I actually did not pay attention. He's a pretty good size one, 880 to 980. But then the question becomes, the one that he's with, which actually is apparently bigger 910 to 1020, is that something that's going to complete an objective? Blonde, or whatever you might call that, is not on the list, but that doesn't mean it's not going to check something off, so I think the move is going to be try to let, the, let it get as close as possible, and then take the one in the back first, in whatever order they end up coming in. If things continue as is, we want to take the piebald first, and then hopefully this one on the run. Again, 4570 with its power and quick follow-ups. It should help us here, it just kinda depends on the angle things flee in. And I guess, good problem to have, they're both getting pretty close, so we'll take the one in the back first. That is the Pybo, the one we originally came here for, and that guy was gonna charge us. I did kinda wonder if there was a way to get that to happen, but I really didn't think shooting another one would trigger it, so it wasn't even something I was going to try. Them getting that close made that quite simple. 928 for that one. Rarity says common. And that does not check off any objective. Now, I did see one with that fur type. I think actually doing the same thing that we had at the beginning, giving the black-white belted objective, so who knows on that. This one, 951 piebald. He actually was bigger, despite the estimate. And that actually doesn't do anything either, so the good news is, couple of nice hogs and about 100 GM from the CSS of taking them out. The bad news is no objectives checked off, so I think actually in the interest of not hunting hogs for the rest of the hunt, we're gonna hop down to here, which technically could have feral hogs at it, but hopefully at least start to run into some deer and a whitetail grunt is a good way to start that. Well naturally we ended up spooking him, but I wasn't sure I could tell he looked decent. We're in pretty good shape here, 170 to 195. Now, I have had it on at least two occasions, shooting that with the wrong gun would be really sad. I've had deer go like 169.9 in situations like this, so I don't want to say this is guaranteed to complete the 170 plus objective, but we're, with that estimate, all but guaranteed to at least get one of those crossed off the list. And we're about an hour and a half into this hunt, and we have killed a lot of stuff with the feral hogs. This will be our seventh harvest. 
counting the hogs and now the whitetail buck. But I was considering switching maps. I'd really like to get the 200 mule deer out of the way. And if this guy is indeed over 170, like the estimate would indicate, we'll probably head down south, try to find a mule deer, and we might go to another map and look to get one of the other objectives done. So let's see what we have for this guy not get ahead of ourselves. Heart shot, by the way, not too bad. 181, not bad. There's something about this 308. We are carrying it when we shot the 200. In fact, that's the weapon that we shot the 200 with. When we came back after my old PC was having trouble and I couldn't stream Classic for a week, we brought the 308 and got a 180 then. And now today it happens again. The first white tail buck we shoot is a 181. Now, we just fast traveled when that guy grunted, so we have some time until we can fast travel again. But we'll get going towards the south, see if we can run into some mule deer yet. Could that actually be a 200 to me it either is like a 205 with the short left main beam and he's going to be 190s or it's a little bit bigger than that and that short main beam isn't going to cost us i can't quite tell it looks like a really good size frame it might just be enough to get there it's going to depend obviously that deduction is not going to help things but once he clears that hill hopefully he's actually going to kind of turn there for a minute we'll take that shot and we'll go and see if he eclipses 200 we'll be ready to move on to another map and i think it's probably worth clarifying videos like this where we're trying to do a bunch of mission objectives a lot of stuff does get cut out like i mentioned with the five old feral hog i thought that it wasn't something we needed for the objective so i just pass it and move on it's not always the way that maybe the editing makes it seem that we just find everything we need for the objectives one after the next. In this case, though, we really did finally be able to fast travel, walk a couple hundred meters, and there's at least a mule deer with a shot, with his estimate going up to 210. So we'll see if he's actually big enough. Everything other than that main, other than that main beam looks pretty good. Fingers crossed it'd be nice to have it done. 202.5, no way. <laughs> That is ridiculous. That's, we've only shot two bucks. It's been a 181 whitetail and a 202 mule deer. And the two deer species on this map are checked off the list. So there's a couple of maps we could go to. I'm kind of thinking Valdebois. I know we need a cross fur type red fox and a 240 plus mule deer. That seems achievable in, at least for the red deer, maybe under like an hour, which is about... That would put us at about three hours, so we'll go and maybe try that, see if we can get a couple more done. Well, there is absolutely no lack of red deer so far in Valdebois. Lots of hinds and stags so far, and I think to this point, this one has probably been the best one. It's probably going to be somewhere in the area of 210. Now, in this case, even though we know it's not going to be above 240 and cross off the achievement, as we have another little stag coming in. It actually could be beneficial just to fire a shot. I think it could be pretty easy to imagine a cross fur type red fox just blending in with rocks somewhere or even just being behind rocks. And by spooking it, when it would move around and in theory, we'd be able to catch that movement and see it and know that that's something we want to go and pursue. Now, I see... Actually, I do see a fox. Not a cross fur type, but I guess that's kind of evidence of what we were looking to do and just generally there were so many red deer up here we're trying to move to the north we might as well actually get something for our efforts because we were going to spook one of them whether we liked it or not i also realized and it's the reason that we have the seven by six four there's a third achievement for valdeball which is to harvest a dark fur type alpine ibex which i can't remember if we've done that or not since they've been added so we might try to do that Either after we've kind of gone through our areas looking for fox and red deer, or if we get lucky enough to get them both before we accomplish that, we might as well look. We'll have a fast travel ready to go, and at least in the case of the dark fur type bighorn, basically the first one we found on stream last week was a 182 dark fur type, so if the ibex rates are any similar to that, it shouldn't be too bad. That would be closer, but... Still not really going to get us above that 240 mark. Max is at 220 again, but I think this one's more like two teens. Pretty sure that's going to be good enough from the 764 to bring it down. 
That's the reason I mentioned it for an Ibex weapon. It's relatively flat shooting, and it's also got more than enough power to take down a Red Deer, so I'm guessing single lung might take a minute, but you shouldn't go too far. Of all things, though, I would not have expected to complete the Mule Deer and Whitetail objective, but then not be able to complete the Red Deer objective just by going up through the river. I guess just better luck on loggers than Valdebot today, but right long at 234 meters, again, the reason it is such a good Ibex gun in my opinion. And I think what we'll do is, even though we're kind of on the north side of Valdebois, I think we're going to go south. There's so many Ibex down in this pretty small area. I think odds are one of them is going to be the first type that we're looking for. Well, one thing's for certain, that is not a dark fur type Ibex, but 230 to 285 is a pretty good one. And I guess in theory we could maybe stir stuff up by taking the shot. It definitely is something we're going to be taking regardless. I want to say maybe 250s. It looks better than a 240 scoring Ibex to me. I certainly hope we got more 7x64 ammo. That would have been really unfortunate to use the last round on something that we're not actually after. But at least at first glance, looking off into the distance where I might expect to see other Ibex, I don't see anything running around at all, so... Might be a little bit empty up here today comparatively, but there was a good one anyway. Definitely not a bad deal considering we haven't found what we're actually after up here. 99 kg actually is a 240. Not quite as big as I thought, but still a really nice Ibex. And again, a, a good little reward as we're going around not finding the dark fur type just yet. I could be wrong, the lighting's not the best up in this area. But I want to say that is the dark fur type. So before that goes anywhere, well, we have a good broadside shot. Let's try to squeeze that above the rocks. Should be well under 200. And that is going to take that Ibex down. Again, I mentioned the 7x64 being a good Ibex weapon. Kind of irrelevant to the main point of today's video being trying to complete the mission objectives. But if you enjoy hunting Ibex, if you ever do those competitions that require 100% harvest value or just long shots, there's a couple of those out there and this gun is pretty good for stuff like that. I find that generally it's dropping the Ibex in their tracks and its accuracy allows you even at range to get those double long shots when you're required to only hit both lungs and nothing else. As for our missions though, amazingly, at least in my mind, no luck with the Red Deer on Vattelbot. Not too surprised we didn't have any luck with the Red Fox. The objectives still require, as we have Tarmagig one absolutely everywhere, a Axis Deer. So I'm thinking Bush Ranger's Run is probably going to be our place to look for Red Fox anyway. That though is much darker than any Ibex I've seen before. So I certainly think we're going to be good. Dark rarity it is. 103 scoring female and one final objective done for the missions. So. Lots of them crossed off the list today. I got to think it, by the way, and it didn't occur to me at the time. We spent the time tracking that piebald feral hog that didn't cross off any objectives. It actually led us to the one that ultimately I thought we were going to accomplish by shooting it. So even if we didn't track it, we'd have one less objective done. It all worked out quite well. The white tail, the mule deer, a bunch of hogs, and now the ibex done from the summer fiesta missions. And I think it's August 25th or something. We've got quite some time to get that done, and the rewards, I think they're well worth the time we put in today. A little over three hours, but a lot of those things cross off the list. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.